Hi, my name is Mohamed Rahmedev. In this video lecture, we are going to continue our discussions about the normal distribution. And in particular, we're going to discuss how we can approximate binomial distribution as the uh, normal distribution. So if you remember, the binomial distribution counts the number of the successful trials when you are going to perform N Bernoulli experiments. So essentially N experiments with only two outputs, success or the failure. You would like to know how many of them is going to be successful, which is the random variable. And as distribution is called as the binomial distribution. So it has a complicated formula and most of the time if N is large, it is difficult to make the calculations. And we say that the normal distribution is the symmetric curve around the mean, right? So where it is going to be more probable or more frequent at the mean, and it's going to be less frequent or less probable uh, far away from the mean, it is going to be given as this function. So uh, the, there is uh, one of the really important theorems in probability theory, which is known as de Moivre Laplace limit theorem, which basically tells us that for a large n, large values of the n, binomial distribution can be approximated using the normal distribution, where the mean of the normal distribution is going to be simply n times the p, and the variance of the normal distribution is going to be the n times the p q. So which is the mean and the variance of the binomial distribution. So this result was proven for p is equal to the 1 over t, first of all, by the French mathematician de Moravre in 1733. And later on, it was generalized for many values, for the other values of the p, by Laplace in 1812. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve a couple of problems and see how, how to do this technically. So let's start with the problem with the coin. So let's say we are going to flip the coin, uh, a fair coin, 40 times. Well, the probability of having hats or tails are equal uh, 1 over t. And we need to find the probability of obtaining 20 hats when we're doing this 40 times. So please note that we can do this using the binomial distribution, or actually this is the binomial distribution. The p probability of having a hat in a single trial is equal to 1 over t. The number of the trials is equal to the 40 in this case, right? And the number of the successful trials should be equal to the 20 because we need to find a valid probability of having 20 heads out of 40. So we just need to put this into the formula. So the P of X is equal to the K is equal to the combinations of the N K, P in the power of K, Q in the power of N minus K. So please note that the Q, which is equal to the 1 minus P, is the same as the P in our case because P is 1 over T. So we can uh, roughly calculate this. It is going to be the combination of 40 and 20 times T, 1 over T in the power of 40. So we would definitely need a calculator in order to perform all of these calculations. It is going to be the 40 factorials divided to the 20 factorials, divided to the 20 factorials times the 1 over t in the power of 40. And if you use your calculators and spend some time in order to make all of these calculations, you're going to get the answer, which is going to be 0. Point. Uh, so the answer is going to be 0. Point 12 and 54. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to estimate this result using the normal distribution. So please note that for any variable, so in our case, so x is given as the binomial distribution with n is equal to the 40 and the probability of success to be equal to the 1 over t. So we say that we can approximate this variable x using the normal distribution, in our case, the normal distribution, where we are need to give two, uh, we are required to give two more parameters as well, so which is the mean. Mean is going to be calculated by multiplying n to the p. So in our case, it is going to be 40 times the 1 over t, which is 20. And the standard deviation, which is going to be the square root of n times the p times the q, which is equal to the 40 times the 1 over t times the 1 over t, which is the square root of 10. Right? So we are going to approximate this result using the normal distribution. 
um, and, 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 and let's see how we can do this. So, so we've just calculated that we can calculate the probability of x is equal to 20 using the binomial distribution, but it takes some time and it requires uh, us to make all of these calculations. But we can approximate this using the normal distribution. The problem is binomial distribution is the discrete distribution and the normal distribution is a continuous distribution. And if you remember, for any continuous variable, the probability of its taking a specific value is going to be simply equal to the zero. But it doesn't mean that we can't really find the probability of x is having a single specific value. What we, had, what we need to do is we need to find this around some interval around this point. So essentially, so if you need to find the probability of x is equal to the 20, we are going to find the probability of x is between 19.5 and 20.5. So we're going to get small interval around 20 and find the probability of your continuous random variable is in this interval. So this correction is called continuity correction continuity correction. Well, when we are approximating a discrete random variable using a normal uh, distribution or the continuous distribution, we would definitely need this kind of correction. So we, we have to like, calculate the probabilities for these values. So if you remember, the, so in order to calculate the normal distribution's probability, we have to uh, we have to perform them, we have to transform them into the standard normal distribution, right? So we are going to subtract the mean from 19.5. The mean is equal to 20, and this is going to be divided to the square root of 10. So less than z, because x minus mu divided to the sigma, which is going to be the z, and 20.5 minus 20 divided to the square root of 10. So if you take a calculator and calculate it, it is going to be minus 0 0.5 over square root of 10, which is going to be minus 0 0.16, less than z, less than 0 0.16, okay? And if you remember, we can find this using the phi, the cumulative distribution function. It is going to be the phi, the area until 0 0.16, minus the area until minus 0 0.16. 16. So what we have to do is we essentially would need the area until 0.16 from the table. So let's, let, let, let's use this table. So please note that I, I would need this table. So from the table, we can calculate that the phi of 0.16 is going to be equal to the 0 0.56, uh, Right? So if you remember that if you are given this area, so the, the probability of finding the area until minus z, it is the same as the probability of finding the z after, after the z, right? So probability of finding the uh, interval from minus 16 until minus 16, it is the same as the finding the probability after. 0 0.16, 0 0.16 here. So essentially, phi of minus z, it is going to be equal to 1 minus phi of z. Okay, so I'm just going to, I, I don't need to find phi of minus 0 0.16. So because I know what is phi of plus 0 0.16 already. So it is going to be phi of 0 0.16 minus 1 minus phi of my, uh, plus 0 0.16. Right? So I'm just substituting this value with the 1 minus 0 0.5 of 0 0.16. So if I open the brackets up, it is going to be 2 times to the phi of 0 0.16 minus 1. And this is going to be equal to 2 times this value, which is um, 0 0.12 and 72, right? So 0 0.12 and 72 minus 1, or sorry, it's going to be 1 point. 12 and 72, and if I subtract 1 from this, it's going to be exactly 0 0.1272.
which is very much similar to this value which we had for the binomial distribution, right? So if you have it evaluate this problem using the binomial distribution, then we would have 0 0.1254. Using the normal approximation of the same problem, we would get 0 0.1272. So it appears we can approximate discrete variables using the continuous distributions and it is very useful in our daily life because most of the time we are going to have the discrete data and we are going to use the normal distribution, the continuous distribution, in order to work with this discrete data. So in general I would like to show you a couple of graphs. So here you can see the binomial distributions graph for n is equal to the 10 and p is equal to the 0.7 here, right? And you know that the mean is going to be equal to the 7 because it is n times the p, right? And you see, so it doesn't look like a normal when n is small, but as we are going to get n to be equal to the 20, 30, or 50, or even bigger and bigger, it is becoming very close to the normal distribution, which is a little bit skewed, uh, skewed of course, right? Which is a little bit moved to the right or to the left, but it is, it is becoming very close to the normal distribution. So this is what does it mean, this de mouavre laplace theorem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve one more problem. So the ideal size of the first year class in a particular college or in particular department is 150 students. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to make the admission, the exams, and after the exams, we have to make the cut line. The problem is some students who are already admitted may, re uh, like may reject the offer, right? They may not, may not accept the offer made by this college, and the probability that student is going to accept the offer is equal to the 30%. Okay, so by just knowing this, the college is going to give the offer to not to 150 students, but the college is going to give the offer to 450 students. But again, it's random variable, so the number of the students who are going to accept the offer, it's random variable. It is possible that more than 150 students can accept the offer, or less than 150 students can make the can make the offer so what is the probability that more than 150 students are going to accept this offer so again so in our case we've got the binomial distribution when n is equal to the 450 right so probability that each student can accept this order is equal to the 0. Point Three. So we know that in average, 150 students are going to make this offer, accept this offer. But again, it's random variable. The number of the students who are going to accept this order is random variable, which has the binomial distribution. So we can find this using the formula of the binomial distribution, x is equal to 150, or actually it is more than 150, right? When it is equal to the 150, it is kind of <laughs> reasonable and doable, but if it is more than 150, so in order to calculate this using binomial distribution, what you have to do is you need to find the probability of x is equal to the 151 plus probability of x is equal to the 152 plus and so on until all the way up until probability of x is equal to 450. And every time you have to use this all of this huge complicated formula of the binomial distribution. And, and it takes a long, long time. So instead of doing this, we can approximate this using the normal distribution. We can say that, hey, it is going to be the probability of x is more than 150.5, which we call as a continuity um, continuity uh, correction, right? And then I'm going to just simply use the normal distribution when mu is going to be n times the p, which is equal to the 450 times the 3, right? 0 0.3. 450 times is a 0 0.3, and the sigma, the standard deviation, which is going to be the square root of NPQ, which is going to be 450 times is 0 0.3 times is 0 0.7, and then we have to take the square root of this. So we are going to say that, hey, this is going to be the greater than Z, 150.5 minus 450 times is a 5, the, uh, so, sorry, times is a 0 0.3, times is a 0 0.3, divided t square root of 450 times is a 0 0.3, times is a 0 
7. So if you calculate all of this bunch of things, you're going to obtain the result of 1.59, okay? And the probability of z is greater than 1.59. It is the same as 1 minus the probability of z is smaller or equal to the 1.59, okay? Or it is going to be the probability here, p, which is equal to the 1 minus phi of 1.59. So the phi of, uh, of 1.59 is roughly 0 0.99 and 49 or something like this. And if you subtract this from 1, it is going to be 0 0.0559, which is, ex so, which is pretty much precise result. So you see, so instead of making all of this long calculations using the binomial distribution, we can approximate this using the normal distribution and calculate this approximately very much easily. So this is one of the really important and useful theorems in probability theory. So at the end, I would like to give you some historical notes. Oh, so here is the calculations from the table, how it is calculated 1.59. So we need to go to the 1.5 and 0 0.09, then this is going to be 0 0.9441. And if you subtract this from the 1, it's going to be 0 0.0559. Okay. So some historical notes. So the normal distribution was firstly introduced by French mathematician Abraham de Mouavre in 1733. De Mouavre used mostly this distribution in order to understand the distribution of the tossing the coin, as we did today. Later on, so the German mathematician Karl Friedrich Gauss used this as an integer part of his calculations of the locations of the astronomical entities. And since then, it became really useful it was proven that it is useful and it became really popular. And since then, so people started to call this distribution as the Gaussian distribution, even though he used this later than de Mouavre. So again, so the normal distribution is one of the really important distributions. We are going to use this in the rest of our topics extensively. And, and I hope that this was very helpful for you.